Namaste. Cardiac arrest is a critical medical emergency that demands immediate attention. It occurs when the heart suddenly stops pumping blood, causing a halt in circulation and depriving vital organs including the brain of oxygen. Understanding the signs, risk factors and swift response measures is very crucial in saving the life of an individual or yourself and safeguarding one's health from every potential risk possible. Today, we have with us Dr. Rajeshwari Nayak, Senior Consultant Cardiologist, Apollo Hospitals Greens Road, Chennai, who will provide us with valuable insights into heart health. With her profound knowledge, she will guide us through the intricacies of sudden cardiac arrest, discussing the latest advancements in prevention, treatment and empowering choices available to lead a healthy life. A very warm welcome to our Facebook live session, Doctor. Thank you. Your presence is greatly appreciated. Thank, Thank you so much. So let's start off by asking, Doctor, what are the leading causes of a sudden cardiac arrest? We see a lot of people coming to it, including celebrities these days, which is more there in the news. That's how we come to know of it. So what are the reasons that lead to a sudden cardiac arrest? Thank you for this question. Uh, there are several causes for sudden cardiac arrest. The commonest one being the heart attack or myocardial infarction, what we call, which occurs as a result of blocks in the blood vessels going to the heart. The other causes are a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy, wherein the heart muscle pumping is weak. Another condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a genetic problem. Certain valvular diseases like severe aortic stenosis, severe pulmonary arterial hypertension, certain genetic problems which can cause electrical disturbance of the heart called Long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome and uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. All these can cause electrical disturbance of the heart leading on to cardiac arrest. So, what is the difference between a sudden cardiac arrest and a heart attack, doctor? Many of us don't understand the differentiation between the two. Heart attack is the reason for cardiac arrest. Heart attack is myocardial infarction. That means the heart blood vessel gets blocked uh, for reasons like, you know, sudden rupture of a plaque and uh, the blood flow to the heart muscle reduces or stops. This causes electrical disturbance in the form of ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation leading on to cardiac arrest. So, heart attack is the reason or cause behind the cardiac arrest. So, what are the warning signs or symptoms that one might experience before a sudden cardiac arrest occurs? Many a time you may not have any signs or symptoms at all, especially in diabetics. Diabetics can have sudden cardiac arrest following a silent myocardial infarction. The other uh, common symptoms are chest pain, palpitation, breathlessness, dizziness, etc. Is blood pressure or high blood pressure one of the reasons as well? High blood pressure can cause people with high blood pressure are more prone for heart attack. People with a high blood pressure which is uncontrolled uh, is highly prone for stroke. So all this can lead on to cardiac arrest. So doctor, as an individual, as a layman, how can I assess the the risk that I can fall into, uh, you know, from getting a cardiac arrest? Yeah, there are different uh, different uh, risk assessment scores available. If a person has high blood pressure, diabetes, if he's a smoker, if he has obesity and high cholesterol, all these people fall into a high risk category. Again, if a person has high strong family history of coronary artery disease. That is, if the person has first degree relative, male or female, male person, that is brother or father, has had a cardiac event before the age of 55, or female relative, that is mother or sister, has had a cardiac event before the age of 65, this becomes a strong family history of um, heart disease for that particular person. So all these patients or persons will be at high risk for cardiac arrest. So are you saying that it is it is or it could be genetic as well? 
Yes, especially if the cardiac arrest, when it occurs in young people, when we say young, less than 35 years, usually it is a genetic which uh, plays a major role. One is uh, strong family history of coronary artery disease or any cardiovascular disease. Certain diseases which I already mentioned, long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome and uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, hokum, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, all these are... Uh, causes, underlying causes which can cause a, uh, put a person at a high risk for cardiac arrest. Doctor, today a lot of uh, younger generation as well as the older generation uh, experience panic attacks. How do you differentiate between a panic attack and a cardiac arrest? See, panic attack is a psychological problem wherein the person will be restless, agitated, they will start breathing fast. Of course, they can even collapse following a panic attack, but they will continue to breathe and they will have a, a normal pulse when you feel the pulse. But in case of cardiac arrest, the person suddenly collapses and he may even stop breathing. So, this is how you should differentiate. And cardiac arrest needs immediate attention. Of course, pa panic attack also needs attention, but bit of delay. You are not going to endanger life there, but in cardiac arrest, uh, any delay, we will lose a precious life. So, what can we do as uh, somebody who is witnessing another person undergoing a sudden cardiac arrest? What can we do to help? See, uh, what a person immediately has to do is give a chest massage or cardiac massage. Uh, till the ambulance arrives or the person is taken to the nearby hospital. Only the cardiac massage will help the person uh, to to a certain extent, we can save many of these lives following cardiac arrest by giving continuous cardiac massage. So, my request to all out there is everyone should learn how to give cardiac massage. Many of the YouTube videos are teaching this. So, basic cardiac massage or cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be learned by everyone because cardiac arrest can happen a person can collapse anywhere at home in the office or in the public place so it's very important or i would say mandatory that all of us know some basics about cardiac massage and all of you should also know the the number uh, how to call the local ambulance till the ambulance arrives you can continue to give massage or take the person to the nearest hospital till the person reaches the hospital continue to do chest massage doctor are there any lifestyle changes that individuals with a predisposed history that you had mentioned uh, obesity high blood pressure sugar as in diabetes and is there any lifestyle change that you would advise for people with a cardiac history or having a predisposition condition? My advice will be all of you should lead a healthy life. I mean, eat healthy, get regular health checkup done, uh, avoid extremes of stress, both emotional stress and physical stress. If you are a hypertensive or diabetic, get it uh, checked regularly, control it well. And uh, if you have strong family history, get a yearly uh, preventive check done and uh, follow the instructions of your physician or uh, cardiologist. And avoid smoking and uh, alcohol in moderation. That's also very important. Are there any gender-based differences in terms of risk or symptoms or outcomes relating to uh, a sudden cardiac arrest, doctor? There are no major differences in the risk, but usually women... Once they develop uh, cardiac arrest, they tend to come to the hospital a bit later than uh, men. Uh, following a cardiac arrest, men tend to come to the hospital faster than uh, women. And outcome following a cardiac arrest, women tend to have poorer outcome compared to men. Uh, the mortality following a cardiac arrest is more in women compared to men. This is because women tend to have uh, more uh, extensive disease compared to uh, men. Many a time women tend to have atypical symptoms. So, they tend to ignore and by the time they come to the hospital, it will be more severe disease and the outcome following the treatment is poorer in women compared to that in men. So, early detection and it's coming to the hospital important. at the earliest is the key here. Doctor, you mentioned about stress and emotional factors which could play a role. 
could you elaborate a bit about it see extremes of emotional stress what we call uh, too much of happiness or too much of sadness can cause uh, a condition called uh, uh, broken heart syndrome or happy heart syndrome here what happens is the heart muscle pumping becomes weak and the person can uh, have symptoms uh, similar to that of heart attack and this can cause uh, electrical disturbance and cardiac arrest so extremes of uh, uh, emotional stress uh, has to be avoided if the person um, experiences any of the symptoms of chest pain palpitation breathlessness or dizziness should rush to the hospital immediately but if they come to the hospital in time many of these lives can be saved uh, very easily doctor will a person who has survived a cardiac arrest uh, have to undergo uh, treatments for a lifetime to avoid the recurrence of a cardiac arrest again true yes he or she has to undergo treatment throughout life and it depends on the underlying cause or etiology for the cardiac arrest i'm sure the concerned physician or the cardiologist will put them on drugs and devices uh, there are many medications and drugs available to prevent recurrence of the cardiac arrest we have uh, device therapy what we call aacd which can be prevent implanted in patients who are at more risk for sudden cardiac death and uh, Uh, this really has come as a big boon to uh, certain subset of uh, patients which is uh, which is my next question uh, can you tell us the impact or the extent to which aeds automated external defibrillators are used in india doctor aeds are not used much in india we are uh, i would say we, i'm sorry to say it is not much used we have long way to go ideally we should have aids placed in schools colleges institutions and you know public places and we should uh, educate uh, public about how to give uh, uh, cpr or uh, early you know cardiac massage and how to use aids by using aids to a large extent again we can save many of the um, precious lives following cardiac arrest we'll take a couple of questions from our viewers doctor Are there any potential risk of a cardiac arrest for my father following his recent angioplasty procedure? Yes, if he has poor heart pumping, he falls at a high risk for cardiac arrest. But of course, your cardiologist should have given you certain medications which will reduce the risk of cardiac arrest. Other reason for cardiac arrest would be following the stent the person is supposed to take certain blood thinners if the person fails to take the blood thinners the stent can get blocked and he can have another heart attack this can cause cardiac arrest so never stop blood thinner medicines or any medicines which is given by your physician or cardiologist they are very important medications for you speaking of medications doctor are there certain medications that individuals should avoid or be cautious of uh, about during their uh, potential link to a sudden cardiac arrest given their predisposed conditions yes yes uh, there are certain medications especially antibiotics um, macrolides uh, fluoroquinolones certain antipsychotics uh, antidepressants certain cardiac medications also can cause uh, something called long qt syndrome and predispose persons Uh, for uh, electrical disturbance and uh, cardiac arrest so never buy medications over the counter it's very important that whenever you use medications talk to your physician and cardiologist whatever they say uh, you f- follow otherwise otherwise it may adversely affect you my husband is a fitness enthusiast and frequently visits the gym he even takes certain supplements and uh, his life lifestyle is basically concerned me about the potential risk of a cardiac arrest could you shed some light on this matter doctor yes exercise is important for heart health but too much of anything is not good so um i would say a high intensity exercise should be avoided especially high intensity exercise where in the heart rate goes beyond 150 is uh, not good for people who are prone for sudden cardiac death with all the underlying problems which i already mentioned 
So exercise to your 80 to 85 percent of your heart rate. 220 minus your age will give you 100 percent heart rate. So calculate your 80 to 85 percent heart rate and exercise only to that level. Beyond that, when you go, there is a risk of electrical disturbance and a sudden uh, cardiac arrest. With regard to supplements, supplements, certain supplements contains high amount of content of caffeine. Um, caffeine can cause palpitation, caffeine can precipitate a electrical disturbance in people who are uh, who have underlying structural problem or any other problem which predispose that person for electrical disturbances. So be careful when you are using supplements, just talk to your doctor and get his or her advice. My mother is in her 60s and sometimes complains of chest discomfort. Could this be a warning sign of an impending cardiac arrest or something affecting her heart? Yes. Uh, chest pain is a warning signal of heart attack, not cardiac arrest. Uh, of course, heart attack, if it is goes undetected, it can lead on to cardiac arrest. So, I would say take your mother to the nearby uh, physician or cardiologist get before she gets, uh, you know, heart attack. Uh, treat it so that you can prevent a cardiac arrest. Uh, we have one more question. Considering my weight, should I be worried about the potential connection between obesity and cardiac problems? She hasn't mentioned her weight as such. So, sure, given that she's not in the ideal range, would you be able to yeah. share your thoughts? Obesity is a major risk factor for heart problem. People who are obese are more prone to develop high blood pressure and diabetes. So, height in uh, centimeters minus 100 will give you your ideal body weight. So, if you are 160 centimeters minus 100, 60 is your um, weight, ideal weight. If you are 175 centimeters minus 100, 75 is your uh, ideal body weight. So, you can calculate and work on this. So, try to lose weight by exercising and dietary restrictions. I've recently started a new job which is quite stressful. What steps should I take to lower my risk of heart diseases? Yeah, stress is an important risk factor for heart disease or heart attack. So, you need to maybe talk to your employer and try to reduce your stress or you can do, you know, there are different ways and means you can reduce the stress by taking up some hobbies or relaxation exercises, uh, whatever may be it is, but uh, try to reduce your uh, stress levels, it's important. So, what would be your message for our viewers today, doctor? Uh, I would like to say, stay healthy, uh, lead a healthy life, get regular exercise done, get the preventive health checks done, avoid smoking, control your risk factors well. And uh, do not ignore any of your symptoms. Any day if you have um, chest pain, breathing difficulty, any of these symptoms, don't think it is, you know, uh, something minor. Go to your doctor, get an ECG done. And uh, if they say if it is minor one, you can be safe. And all of you should have a good health insurance coverage for all of you and the family members. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights on heart health, doctor. For appointments with Dr. Rajeshwari Nayak, Senior Consultant Cardiologist, Apollo Hospitals, Greens Road, Chennai, please contact 044-4040-1066. I repeat, for appointments with Dr. Rajeshwari Nayak, Senior Consultant Cardiologist, at Apollo Hospitals, Greens Road, Chennai, please contact 044 4040 1066. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, viewers.